be able to just do our normal critique like we normally do. And then it will auto post into the feed, the replay. So not even a YouTube, you know, I have to encode this or upload that or flick this to private, you know, public or none of that stuff. It should just once we finish, it should, you know, it'll take some time to encode. Then it'll just show up there. Perfect. Yeah, and people are, have found the event. There's a couple people here. James Glennie's in here. Michael Brown's. Michael Rhino's in the house. Hey, folks. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't see them yet. It's it must be a delay seeing them come in. I see James you, Glennie. Yep. Here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh okay, no, no, so no. You're... I'm sorry. Ah, participants in chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So those are the things that we need to get our sea legs around. So, folks, thanks for coming in. So we're just getting started here. Obviously. As you can see, this this what we're doing right now is one of the main reasons I made the switch over to the Circle platform because they are continuously <laughs> rolling out these different features that we need for the community. One of them is this, being able to do events like critiques, not so much mixers or anything because it's not it's not a crowd kind of thing um, like a Zoom meeting. It's not intended to be that. It's more of a like a, a stage type environment where there's a couple of people on stage and they're presenting to a crowd of, you know, millions. That's the, that's the general mode that it's in, but it allows me to do this and not have all that infrastructure of YouTube and streaming into it and doing all that stuff, which is fine. But in terms of ease of use, this is better because I can just crank up an event, invite whomever into it, boom. And we're in the room and it auto records. I hope I set this to record. But it's it all recording, yeah. <laughs> it <is. laughs> I saw it, yeah. Okay, good. So it auto records and then we'll auto post into the feed into the community immediately. Back, I believe we'll see because it was vague on the instructions, but or on the documentation. But it should post into the main um, photography talk feed as a update to this event. I think, but we'll see. It's. I couldn't test that. <laughs> we'll I couldn't see. test that without we're, looking like a fool in front of everybody last not night. So I didn't... Sure. <laughs> you guys are the uh, the crash test audience here. So who's in here? Nora's in here now. Paolo, welcome, Paolo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And we got we got a good number of submissions too. I think it has something to do with me sending out <laughs> a reminder email. I don't know. <laughs> And being the think? open category. Come on, we know that's true. Well, the combination of both of those. And folks, I know you guys are new to this interface too. So if you look over there um, on the, the right side of the screen, you will you should see a chat window. I'm not sure if it shows you participants or not because we're, we're co I'm a host and Troy's a co-host and we can see who's in the room. I don't know if you guys can or not. Tell me if you can in the chat, if you can see who else is in the room. But at the top there, if you're a co-host, it says participants in chat. Um, I think if you're just a, just a participant, you may only be able to see chat on the right side. And to open that window down at the bottom of the screen, you should see like a little uh, person, like an echoed icon of a person. Um, or I'm sorry, you should see an echoed uh, or a, a chat bubble thing with a little dot in there. If you click that, that should slide out the window for the chat. And if you want to raise your hand, you should see a little hand thing down there for you to throw your hand up in the air if you want to ask us a question or anything. But it's pretty the the UI is pretty straightforward. It's pretty pretty simple. Hopefully. Yeah, and it's really cool. In participants and in the chat, you can click on somebody's name and it brings up their uh, circle, like how many posts they've made, comments, their bio, where they are, uh, their contacts and social. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, which is great because it's all integrated into the community. It's not like this third party, nothing wrong with YouTube, yeah. but it's this third party system that we're then embedding into the community. It's all into the community, inside the community. And hopefully it'll keep itself contained in that event post. So the event post, you, you guys will notice like previously I was creating, there's a photo critique space inside the community and I would create a new post in there for each critique. And then in the comments, you would add your photos, which is fine. This streams line, it streamlines it a little bit or a lot because now there's just one event to rule them all. So one event with comments and all your images on in that event. And hopefully the replay will also go in this event. So you now um, much better. I think what I'll do is to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, let me go ahead and screen share now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. 
So, um, so I'm sharing the community now. So if I scroll back up, I'm on that events page that you clicked on. You clicked on join the stream, presumably to get in here. But this graphic up here will probably change to be the topical graphic again for whatever the topic is. So 201, whatever that's going to be, the title of it will be up here in some little fancy schmancy graphic that I'll put together. And um, yeah, that's it. So yeah, it's exciting. Then off to the right here, it's got all the information for the event. So this way I can actually schedule out these events now, which is amazing. So I can schedule them out into the future and have them all self-contained without having to spin plates and create YouTube events into the future and stream keys and all that, all that fun stuff. So, so Troy, you ready? You ready to dive in? Yes. Yes. But I just learned, I just learned a new word. What's that? Mechatronics. 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 You know why I know that? Cause I looked no. up Palo. Palo is a professor of mechatronics. And I was like, I wonder what that is. Oh, and that's so kind of cool. That yeah. sounds cool. What a cool title. It sounds like the uh, maybe the support team for Megatron or something. Right? The field of mechatronics includes robotics, industry automation. Wow. That sounds so that sounds good. Everybody's smarter than me. <laughs> exactly. He's in other words, he's building the robots that will enslave us in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but efficiently. It'll be mechanized and easy to to yeah. Megatronics, Skynet, you know. <laughs> Oh my God, Cyberman! That's what he's building. There it is. I, Good. If you get that reference, please let me know because Frederick would, does not get that. So I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I watch <laughs> real science fiction. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Paulo says, "I swear, I am not sure." That's what all the architects of Armageddon say. <laughs> yeah, I'm building it for good. Yeah. Yeah, this this no one will ever open this Pandora's box. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, James. Yes, I knew James would get that joke. Yeah, see, you guys have you have the was, I'm guessing Doctor Who, right? We're an elevated geekdom. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you. Yeah, no, don't tell me. I don't I don't even know. <laughs> All right, let's dive in. This is critique number two hundred and one. The topic was open general. And uh, let's start with the first one, Unfazed by Mr. Craig Stampley. Craig Stampley. Yeah. I, I really like this image. I thought that uh, the whole mood of it was was really, really cool. The background effect, you know, the, the, the hand language, the body, everything. Um, the only thing for me uh, with this image was is I just felt that the lighting was sort of too flat and and too soft for the drama i think that the background is kind of like telling us right like i i wish that it was a little bit harsher lighting and a little bit darker shadows and you know things like that so mm, more dramatic um, yeah because it really fits that i feel like that that backlight that he has going on is more like a club scene or something like he just had a rough day uh and you know is going to take a break and I just feel like it should be more moody. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very secret agent-y kind of shot, right? James Bond shaken, not stirred. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. The, the, I love this shot. I think it's like, this is men's magazine type shot, right? You'd see this in any GQ magazine or whatever. Um, what, what I think, I don't even want to say that what bugs me, but I think, what I would want to see is either no label on that bottle or the label. Like I want to, and I don't know, I don't know if that was intentional. I know everything, you know, most of the things that Craig shoots are very meticulous and intentional. So I got to, I got, I have to think that that label facing to the side there is an, is intentional for some reason, but something about me either wants to know what that liquor is or get rid of that label altogether, you know, and just have it be kind of a generic bottle or face it to the back or something. So it's more obscured because I'm struggling to look at it. The other thing is the, the cork, I guess the plastic bottle cap that he's got in his other hand. I want that to be a shot glass. <laughs> no, <laughs> really, no. He I wanted not, to be a, or no. a whiskey glass or something. No, this guy's not pouring that in a glass. He's going to pour that in his face. Yeah, oh, he doesn't need guy, a glass. Is, no, he's got class. Look at this dude. This dude is yeah, he's got not class, stirred. but 
he's unwound. Come on, man. Come on. How many times have you come home from a long day shooting a wedding? You still got your wedding clothes on. You walk in, you're gonna you're gonna get a glass of wine and you see a bottle of you know Oban sitting there. Ah, I'm just gonna you take a hit out of the Oban. Hey folks in the oh, wait, audience. that was me. You, That's what I you, I was gonna say you are witnessing <laughs> classic projection. <laughs> I mean, come on. Does everybody do that? Right? <laughs> yeah, I just don't have this amazing backlight following me around everywhere I go. Right? Would that be cool if you had it? Had that? Yeah. You know, I don't um, think I've ever taken a swig out of a bottle of alcohol. Oh, it's like, good. Ever in my life. I don't think I've ever turned a bottoms up on yeah. a, yeah, it's on good. a bottle. <laughs> um, I, I would just say to Craig, you know, challenge. I, I would challenge you to, to like on an image like this, um, your lighting right? Like more sophisticated lighting. This is, this is really simple lighting, you know, umbrella, soft box, you know, just off camera a little bit to camera, right? Like this really, really could do something more dramatic um, with this for sure. So some edge lighting and things. Yeah. I like James yeah. Glenn. He says, I skipped the wedding shoot part. <laughs> it's like, right. Compression. <laughs> skip right to the good part. That's how you live your That's life. A good idea. Yeah. Screw these weddings. Yeah, I like this. So any other any other comments on this one? He's got a he's got kind of a burgundy key line around the edge there and a nice thick heavy border, which I like because it adds to the I mean yeah. this shot is oozing masculinity as it is, and that heavy border sort of adds to it. You know, it's like you know, this kind of powerful. Uh, yeah, I mean just a couple a couple other nitpickery points. Um I, I, I'm not a fan of the white shirt because it's it's very bright, it sticks out. So if this was a model, I would have picked a completely different color shirt. Um, if you don't have a choice, I would have him button the shirt, uh, the jacket, uh, mm. to hide the white shirt even more. And then I would get the, that bow tie maybe to overlap a little bit to hide that bright spot that's right below his chin because that's actually very distracting to me. I, I feel like it's drawing me away. Um, so if you're thinking about taking an image like this into competition, you're going to find that those are going to be negative elements. But I, I would have buttoned the jacket. Yeah, I'm curious, chat. What do, what do you guys think? Would you would you button the jacket, or would you let it go as is with the wrinkly? I just kicked some bad guy ass as James Bond look that he has here. Because come on, <laughs> this shirt is the end of the day, man. It's it's uh you know Miller time, right? So he's he's doing his thing. How are you gonna have a pressed clean shirt or be a, have a buttoned up jacket if you're you know, you've just uh, averted a national not nuclear about, disaster. It's not about the truth, man. It's about the story. That's it. It's all about the story. You know, okay. Okay. James Bond only unbuttoned his jacket when he was going to take it off. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, like, James says yeah, he likes it open. Yeah. Yeah. The white is a bit eye catching. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, end of the day, no button. Yeah, see? No button. Thank you. Steven says, I think that given he's going to take a swig straight from the bottle, the unbuttoned jacket is consistent with yeah, the action. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> then you got to change the shirt. Yeah, got to get him to change his shirt before he, he gets in, this, in this, the shot. So what, sh what, black shirt, you think? Gray? Uh, it's something that's not bright white. Yeah. Yeah, I would. You know, all my my dress shirts are all monochromatic, so they're either they're either white, gray, or black. That's all I have. I don't have any. I think I have one shirt that has buttons and a collar. I think I have one. <laughs> Paulo, Paulo says, or no shirt at all. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah there you go. I like you have that. all that all that grizzly man hair sticking out of the jacket. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we don't need that. We don't need that. All right, cool. Awesome. Craig Stanfield, you have the honor of being the first photo that we've critiqued using this new system. So thank you, sir. All right. Coming up next is making sure we're not missing anybody. All right. Michael Rhino. He says waterfall during a recent hike in Rocky, Mar Rocky Mountain National Park. That's never bad. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, see it. that Phil. Phil is is infecting everybody with that that long exposure <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I I really I really like this. I think this is a very postcard. 
You know, mm -hmm. this is this is the shot that when you when you're kind of like you hear a brook or you hear a stream or the rustle of the trees or you, you you talk about fall colors, like this is the shot, you know, this is that that epitome of smooth water and beautiful colors and yeah, it's 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 really fun. Yeah, it's a really mm -hmm. great shot. Um I'm I'm kind of struggling with the lower right hand corner the little pool mm -hmm. i don't know that i don't know that we need that in there or if we do need just a little bit of it you know yeah yeah that one yeah it feels like it, it that that's where your subject would sit maybe right <laughs> if well, you're gonna do... or um you know if if you had had the, the leaves swirling in there and they were blurred as well. So they were part of that, that motion or that action or something, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that would, that would help because then it would be an element, but everything else is like, you got your trees, you got this movement of the water kind of cutting through, you know, the rocks and everything. And then you've got sort of this kind of dead space in the lower right hand corner that I, it's really just not adding to the image. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe that's for the text. For the for the greeting oh, card. Stop. Right <laughs> <laughs> All of Frederick's poorly composed images, he just throws that's, text. That's in, what you uh, gotta say. Yeah, that's it's a motivational <laughs> it's a motivational poster, and down there you'd put. Sometimes you gotta just go with the flow. Done. Sometimes, Perfect. yeah. Sometimes <laughs> Troy's wrong. That's what you put there. Sometimes you have to be the rock amongst the flowing uh. water. <laughs> Come on, you got to make it oh work. Oh my God, it's terrible. Yeah. It's so, what would have happened here, that. Troy? What would have happened here if you had aimed your, if Michael had aimed his infrared camera at this scene? Um, this this may have gone somewhat flat. Uh, I don't I, I don't see a lot of sunlight in there. I mean, the trees maybe would have lightened up a little bit, but not much. And then everything else is in shade. Um, you would have got some darker shadows and some water. I think it would have been flat. I think you might have got a flat image if you had some sunlight coming through the trees or something a little bit more specular. Yeah. But uh, it's always worth pointing your camera at, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a pretty shot. Yeah, you can get lost in this. Good shot, Mr. Ryan. Trying to find an artist. Uh, I'll I'll come up with it later. Um, Random, right. random, random thought by Troy. I'll think, I'll think of it later. And there's an artist that does shots like the one Michael Rhino that you showed, um, but he's very intentional. Like he'll grab some red leaves on the way, you know, and he'll put them in the pond or in the pool, in the stream next to the fall colors, you know. And it, it's it, it's very manipulated, but it's very cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, coming up next is. Pita Levshin. Oh, that's very cool. I know right yeah. where this is at. That's very nice. Where is this? This, this feels Cuba. Uh, I, I, it's an it's a it's a mining town. I can't pronounce it. It starts with a T, and it's outside of Vegas. So when you leave Vegas, it would be to the east. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's very popular. It's a very common place to a lot of people go photograph and stuff. It's an it's a really neat place. It's pretty big. Um, but I love the perspective of through the the broken windshield to another car. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like yeah. it's like they're looking at each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the feel because it, it it gives you kind of an uncomfortable feeling too because you're inside of this kind of ratty car and you're like oh. My breathing right. is bad. It's like, what's happening? You know, and it, it puts you, the viewer, inside the car. So you're trapped in that frame within the car looking through that. I'm guessing there's no windshield in there, but you're looking through that sort of front portal. But then Peter's also trapped us again with, uh, with a border. So we're looking through a portal, through another portal into that car that's peeking around the corner. So I see what you did yeah, there, Levin. I see what you did. It's a frame within a frame, which is which is usually a very very cool technique if if you can you know if you if you see it on purpose. Um, and I and I love how the the sort of what is it the fuel pump is really the hero of this image. It's really the the you know because it's the brightest object. It's on that rule yeah. of third. It's it really sort of attracts your eye. It's it's kind of the hero there. 
Um, it's like the watchtower over the other cars, you know? And then, of course, then you see the inside of this car and some of the stuff. So, um, and great treatment, by the way. This is a really good treatment. In full sunlight, this was shot. So, oh, wow. Yeah, it's really gritty. You know what's interesting about this shot? There are almost no or very few elements of the shot aside from sort of this, whatever that is up there. I don't know. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We see yeah whatever. Yeah. Whatever this is up here, and and these little items right here. Everything else, you're only seeing a piece of them, right? You're only seeing a piece of that pump. You're only seeing a piece of that car in the distance. You're getting a cropped version of the car that you're in. Everything is right. just, you know, you're you're kind of forced to interpolate and figure out what's right. going on in the scene by just the clues that Peter's given us. Yeah, it's very classic. It's very clean, and um. You know, it's something that you can look at for a long time. So it's it's it tells a wonderful story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very nice. Very good, Peter. All right. Coming up next is Karen Sweeney. Karen says, Sunny Woodland Glade from a walk last week, D850 with a 24 to 120 millimeter lens at 40 millimeter F4.5. Uh, one second at ISO 64. One second. Nice. Yeah. The question is, why would you shoot for one second in ISO 64 when you could just shoot it like 400 ISO, you know, and hand hold it without any problem? Mm -hmm. Good question. Because you're shooting with like a D850, so there's no noise. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what, what maybe, I don't know, maybe she's trying to do a longer exposure so that some elements wouldn't render in here. You know, I don't know. Possibly. Yeah, I would be concerned at a second that, that you get movement in the foliage mm -hmm. is the reason that I bring that up. Yeah, I, I yeah, that must have been a windless day in Scotland, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is, that, is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know. We don't have those around here. Um, but I, was looking at this, I was thinking this, this spot right here is obviously a focal point, or, or right. I, I would argue the focal point in the shots right here, right? right. So it feels like this is... This is, it feels like there's some, there should be something here. I don't know, maybe some, someone on a horse or, you know, I don't want to be, you know, beat a dead horse or literally and put a model here or something or an old car. Something feels like this scene is the supporting character for whatever's sitting right here in the sunbeam. I don't know. What do you think? No, I, I think that's a, I think that's a really valid point. And I think that, that, that really sort of leans into the idea that, the background and the surrounding environment matters as much as maybe, you know, your subject that you're photographing. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have a model with a bottle, <laughs> Craig's bottle, as James put it, um, <laughs> you got to have the supporting character is the background or maybe the background is, is more beautiful. And then you have this very subtle image of somebody maybe walking their dog or something through the path. And there's sort of a secondary element, but one should stand on its own without the other. Yeah. And so this is a, this is a really beautiful scene. And I think that for anybody that likes to be outside, you want to walk down that path, right? You want to be there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, you know, in, in the, in post, I would de-emphasize how bright the bright spot is a little bit and make it more of a subtle bright spot. And I would give a little bit more light to the path, um, hmm. you know, and have it fade off <clears throat> as we as we go into there. Not not in an unnatural way, but I, I feel like it's a little harsh right there. The spot. Give it a little bit more fall off. Yeah. Yeah. This reminds me of like, doesn't this like put you in the, the mindset of a like a Renee Robin background plate? Right. Because you one of her little elven people with pointy ears kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Standing there with a sword saying you shall not pass. Right. Yeah. And these trees almost look like sentries standing there. That was another reference, by the way, Frederick, to, to another movie. You shall not pass. Uh, yeah. That was Gandalf, right? Was that Gandalf? Oh, when it, who was he fighting? I don't know. One of those weird oh. creatures. <laughs> I have That's yet to get through one. Those movies are three hours long, Troy. Who can watch those movies? <laughs> They're longer than that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Like, I tried. I've tried many times to, like, you know what? This is going to be a Lord of the Rings day. We're just going to, like, 
just go for yeah. broke and get this yeah. get these scenes in my head and yeah. i'm sleep like halfway through the first one i just can't do it it's just i don't know <laughs> i'm not a fantasy guy i can't do fantasy <laughs> he was he was he was uh fighting a balrog just you know just yeah. to set the scene oh my god <laughs> you you realize you're a you're a uh, you know middle aged man talking about those creatures. I, I don't know why I remember that. I don't know why I can't remember other things, but that's stuck in my head. I mean, I'm saying for a 13 year old, you know, it's like no, that's a mole rat, whatever it is, you know. The, well, that I did makes read the... those books when I was <laughs> oh you 16, read them? So. Oh my god! Wow, Twice. No, I haven't read those three times. Yeah, maybe three times. You were reading those. I was reading Stephen King. That's where our, our brains diverge. Makes sense now. And you hate horror, see? And I yeah, it Stephen all makes King sense. Will, yeah. <laughs> Stephen King will get in your brain and mess you up for days, man, if you read a Stephen King novel. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not that's not a lie. It's not, yeah, it's true. It's true. All right. Cool shot. Thank you, Karen Sweeney. Appreciate that. Next up is Waterfalls from Phil Lewenthal. Look at this shot, man. Look at this nice i love that that water looks like flowing hair like blowing in the wind the interesting thing about this shot i had to come back to this a couple times over the weekend i was looking at it and i was thinking he was successful in creating something that is tack sharp but blurry at the same time and it kind mm -hmm. of works in that kind of peanut butter and chocolate kind of way right it's a nice pairing of those crispy sea palms there getting washed on by the ocean water and the blur of those but just enough motion blur so that the water didn't turn completely cottony it still right. has streaky detail in it so he did a right. really good job on this right no and that and that's the that's the struggle with any technique right is finding the right amount of spice that you're going to add to your image with that technique and i think that um as as you pointed out like this image has just the right amount of of that long exposure um, to give it a sense of motion without giving it a sense of like fog, you know, which works in some in some areas, but it certainly wouldn't work as well in this one. So yeah, great great compositional elements. Um, you know, the leading lines are great. The the light uh, in in the image is really drawing our eyes to all these little wonderful areas. The main sort of we'll call it the waterfall, and then the mountains that are off to the right. I, I also kind of picture this as like the world is flooding and that's Mount Everest and Mount Whitney on the right, you know, and that's what it looks like from satellite view is, <laughs> is the water cascades over the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. You need to like Photoshop in a little Noah's Ark down there in this little, this little area right here. <laughs> yeah. Give yeah. you some scale. <laughs> yeah. You can put Seattle in there or something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah, but wonderful. Yeah, well done. Compositional elements. Um, you've got just enough calm, like in the lower left, l enough smooth to highlight the the busy areas of the movement, the motion. You've got the rocks are tack sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you got all the things going for it. Isn't it great how Phil is like Phil is able to basically he's like harvesting his neighborhood, right? He lives right over there by these sea palms and he goes on his right. walk and he captures all this raw material right on his walk and then takes his takes the catch of the day back to Lightroom or Capture One and brings it into Phil World like this, which is kind of cool. Right. Right. Oh, yep, job. exactly. I like it. Thank you, Phil. Good job. All right. And up next is Mark Charette. Birds words. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Yeah, this I, I really like uh, where this is where this image is going. Um, I do I do wish that we had a less modern typewriter to go in sort of with the distressed look of the table if if you know mm. if it was stylized. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the mood is good now. I, I probably would have shot from a lower angle to try to and brought the binoculars closer to the edge of the table to elevate them up, to isolate them against the window just a little bit and turn mm -hmm. the, the typewriter so that it wasn't so intentionally perfectly square, you know, give it sort of a, of a casual, you know, look. Um, yeah. But I, but I do, I do appreciate the shot and I, and I want to be there. Like I want, I want, I want to sit there. I want that. 
Right. That looks very relaxing right there. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, this this typewriter. Yeah, if it was one of those old kind of Ernest Hemingway looking typewriters, kind of off. Right now, it's very parallel. Like the front of it is parallel with the right. desk here. So it looks very intentional. If you turned it a little bit so it's cheating towards the binoculars a little bit. Yeah, and like you said, maybe get down a, just a little bit lower to put the binoculars so that they're in the frame a little bit, in the window frame, so that they're right. not, there's not so much this this line separating all this stuff from this stuff. If you go down a little bit, then these become, becomes a little bit more united. Um, so yeah, I agree with that. Maybe black and white on this one. I don't know. The wood, I like the feel of the brown wood in here. It feels good in the green trees. So Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I would annoying. take this out. Did you see this little element right here? I did. I, I yeah. had to leave you something to talk about. So I yeah, love, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love what is this? Reflection is this and the black and white? <laughs> right. Is this a reflection of the of a window behind us, or is this a I television? So. I couldn't figure it out. I think it's a reflection of the window. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. I would nuke that. That's that's really easy to nuke out of there, right? Because there's there's nothing but high frequency trees and stuff in there. Yeah, but the the thing is, and and I would love to hear from you know uh, a Dennis or a Renee on this. Um, sometimes high frequency isn't better because then it creates this weird textury pattern that's super hard to make look natural. You know, nature has this 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 un symmetric symmetry you know and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sometimes when you try to get in there and photoshop it it's like sand like you, you try to photoshop a big chunk of sand it looks wrong right. <laughs> because right. it's it's orderly or something i don't know yeah organized chaos right yeah but i do yeah. like this this is this is really nice really mm -hmm. nicely done yep it's a fun shot black and white black and white i knew, I knew black, you were gonna say with that. a border sloppy border oh my god yeah, like a. You like need an intervention. Whole, no, do the whole Instagrammy thing with the the Polaroid border and the. It looked great. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if he did that, like with a Polaroid border and then, you know, black sharpie something on there, like you know something yes. could be like like birds words or something. I don't know. My office. Yeah. Uh huh. Very nice. Thank you, Mark Charette. All right. Up next is Kai Grattert. Look at that. Yes. Look at these <laughs> muted, beautiful colors right there. Look at that. I just, yeah, I'm so glad. One, I'm very happy to see Kai's work um, mm -hmm. show up in the critiques again, because I just, I really, well, we really miss seeing Kai's stuff. And he's been in a couple hangouts lately, which is nice. So we're glad to see you back. And I just love Kai's work. Um, he really embraces that minimalism and, and just wonderful compositional elements, which I just, I really appreciate. So uh, this image is amazing. Um, you know, if this was in a, if this was in a competition, I would be, you know, high eighties, low nineties hmm. for sure. Um, and why, the, why would you score it like that? Well, there's nothing, one, there's nothing wrong with it. There's everything right about it. You know, the horizon is on the lower thirds. There's there's continuous detail throughout. Um, you've got this wonderful layers of not only light and dark and then light again. So you're sort of sandwiching these these layers of tones, but you also have varying colors that are very attractive. So you go from like this bright orange to this like darker orange on the mountain and then this like subtle blue layer. Yeah. Um, so you're you're really just sort of like, playing to the to our mind you know it's just eye candy it's just it's wonderful mm -hmm. yeah and there's got to be something i got to read up on this the psychology of the teal and orange juxtaposition right because like you know we've talked about this in the in the mixers but the you know the use and questionable overuse of the teal and orange color combination but it's appealing Right. I don't know. It's like well, in this complimentary shot, here, it colors. right. Yeah. yeah I mean, right? but it's yeah, they're, they're complementary colors. Like there's all kinds of colors that are that are complementary and th they go together because that's how our brains work. It's how we see color, at least in, in Western culture. So it works. Right. And they complement each other when they're at the proper ratios. And I think that um, an image like this, uh, they're they're doing very well. 
And, and, I, and I do want to point out that this is an image that I think on a rare circumstance <clears throat> that the entire image really is the subject. It's very rare that you have that. I mean, you, you could say the hero is the mountain, um, but you could be a favor of the, of the sky too, right? Like it's, yeah, yeah it's pretty solid. Yeah, this is solid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even think that when I first saw it. So when I first saw it, I consumed the image as a whole, like you're saying, the whole thing was a subject. Obviously, the artist is trying to tell me that, you know, color, 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 right? And right, right. looking at it from that sort of graphical standpoint, looking at those three elements versus, okay, what's the story within the frame that they're trying to tell me? I didn't, there is no, it's, it's, it, I don't feel like there is a story within the frame. The whole thing is the story. Like, look at this. Yeah. Look at what Earth has given us, you know, let's take yeah, a look. It's pretty at nice. It doesn't suck. That's that's our goal. It doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That should be the topic of an upcoming critique. You know what? Just submit something that doesn't suck. There you go. So. Hey, uh, one of the best business programs I ever saw. The guy, the guy walked up and you know, he's got beautiful work and he does portraits and weddings and everything. And he says, Look, he goes, he goes, that my total motto is I just want to I just want to create images that don't suck. I can sell I like stuff it. that doesn't that right and and that makes perfect sense. Everything above that is a win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a bar. I mean, <laughs> yeah, know? don't make garbage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could you could argue that you should be a little bit higher than that, right? I want to make stuff well, that is excellent right. that nobody <laughs> else can you know is going to drop jaws when they look at it. Doesn't suck. Seems like phoning it in. That's a yeah. whole nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's like, like, that's like doing your homework. Possible. You know what? I'm good as long as I get a C minus. I'm good. You know, maybe a D, but as long as. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, sure a, like, that's a whole uh, business conversation that we could go down that hole. For sure. For sure. But this definitely doesn't suck, Kai. Thank you for sharing. No, this. no. Thank you, Kai, for submitting images that don't suck. Yes. Yes. Everybody. Everybody. This should be our rule. That's our rule for the community. <laughs> Uh, what is this? Golf fruit, fritillary, 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 butterfly. All right, look at this alien. I like it. Now, is it? Shouldn't even be legal. It, look at that. Look at that. Look at that big tongue coming out of there, getting that pollen. That's crazy. I know. I know. It's it's wonderful. I love the the color harmony here. Um. And the, and the and the control of depth of field, like your your field of focus, which is great because the butterfly is very well in focus. The left antennae is slightly out at the tip, so mm -hmm. if you're going to be a little picky, we would like to see that one sharp. Um, but all things considered, uh, it's sharp where it needs to be, and I and I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is just exceptional. You know, I look at this one, I'm, I'm wondering, did, did, he, did he submit an image with the hummingbird? Was that Michael's image that had the hummingbird on this flower? I feel like it was this flower. Oh, that exact flower. Yeah. I, I feel like it was, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't, but I feel like there was a hummingbird shot on a flower, very similar to this one. Um, even the flower was at a similar angle. Cause I remember thinking, ah, do I want that flower to be vertical or is it okay tilted? So, yeah. yeah. And and that's an interesting point that you bring up about the flower, because that, that's always kind of a a discussion amongst judges. Right. When we're when we're looking at, you know, nature and and, and things like this, like, does it need to be vertical? Mm -hmm. And and my my argument always is, is as long as it's not off uh, beyond like seven degrees. Right. Like seven degrees is like the happy tilt. Um so it has sort of that natural, like maybe the wind is moving it or, you know, it's sellable. Mm -hmm. But if you put that like 30 degree Dutch angle at the whole world sliding off. Nah, that's not right. Good. Right. Yeah. Like the, the stem is coming out of the bottom right corner kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I, when I, when I was sort of going through that, that thought exercise of do I, do I want that flower vertical or horizontal or, or off tilt like it is here, I was thinking vertical if it's vertical, then it may, I don't know, maybe I'm just reading too far into it, but it telegraphs too much intentionality into the shot. Like the photographer, mm. it cropped it square and put this 
put this the stem directly in the middle and the flower is perpendicular to the sides and then we have this butterfly element that's breaking the symmetry that's one thing but looking at it like this it looks like you just kind of just captured the shot it's subtle it's off tilt but it it looks like it looks a little bit more realistic i don't know i don't know maybe i'm maybe yeah no it feels more natural mm -hmm. yeah it definitely definitely feels more natural i found I'll, i'm gonna put a link i'm gonna put a link in the chat um for this photographer that he manipulates the the environment the natural environment that he does he does some really 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 crazy oh yeah stuff. share that for sure i'm all about manipulating the natural environment <laughs> uh, when you when you look at his images it, it'll it'll make sense um some people will say, oh, you don't do that in nature. Like you just, you, you capture nature the way that it is. But oh. I'm down with his art. I like it. He's, he's got, some you know what I say to those people? Yeah, I say to those people, I am nature, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> nature made me, right? So whatever I do is natural <laughs> by definition. So, I yeah. Know. I yeah. like this shot though. This is really cool. All right, Michael Brown. Up next is Tim Ingle. Tim Ingle says, big winner. Five light setup. The money falling was composited from six separate images. Part of this month's issue uh, artwork for Sacramento Magazine. Oh, cool. I have to check that out. Look at that. Yeah, very clever. You know, <laughs> the first thing that I thought of when I saw this image was like, that's real money. Like, how are they throwing that around in a casino? You're going to lose bills. You're going to definitely lose bills. You know, um, that is not real money. Tim sent me a shot. You can buy this money on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> it's fake money. It's fake money. Nicole found some money like this around the lake that we live next to. Like you know, there's like a walking path and somebody had dropped quote dropped two $100 bills. They were kind of off to the side. You know, a little bit dirty, a little bit crinkled up. And she, she looked around, she grabbed him, brought him home. She's like, look at what I found around the lake. And I'm looking at it. And then I'm like, okay, why does it say uh, for, I think it said something like for cinematic use only or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, this is a trap for the, for the, uh, the treasury, right? Because if somebody finds that innocently, and doesn't yeah. look closely enough at it and tries to pass it off as real, they're going to jail, right? Or at least they got a headache for a year trying to explain themselves. Yeah, that's the true. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So beware. Uh, if you find a lot of money like this, look at it really closely and look for the for promotional purposes only or whatever on that thing. Right, right, right. Uh, but, but extremely cool shot. Um, you know, very, very right in uh, Tim's wheelhouse, you know, mm -hmm. very technically well done. I, I love the lighting, by the way, like the, I know that like with Tim's it's, it's very intentional lighting. And I think that it's, it's wonderful how it's a little, you know, he's got that off camera light that's behind subjects, camera left subject, right behind his shoulder, creating a little bit more drama. Um, you know, we see the casino perfectly well, his expression, you know, this, I, I, just imagine like this lighting or something like with Craig's pose too, right? Like that type of mood really, really works. So, yeah. 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 It's really good. Def definitely a, a good illustration of commercial photography, right? Commercial location photography. Like this yeah. is the kind of stuff. Who was that, that, uh, that used to, I had a couple of books from this famous photographer. It was in the era of Dennis Reggie. Not that Dennis Reggie is, you know, a bygone era, but it was when Dennis Reggie, you know, Dennis Reggie, right? He's yeah. put, put, putting out these books on weddings and all that. There was another photographer who I think has passed away. I have to think of his name. Money but Zucker. He had a, no, not Zucker. He wasn't. Cause Zucker's a wedding photographer, too. This this guy was a commercial yeah. photographer. Oh, okay. And and he had a bunch of books out on how to do this kind of photography, like, oh, you know, with all the lighting diagrams and, you know, yeah. the schematics yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, I can't remember his name. I'll think of it and I'll share it with the community. But yeah, this this shot reminds me of those kind of shots because you look at it on the surface. And it's like, eh, whatever. You just snap a picture of this guy. It you looks know, easy. Like it's yeah, right. It's but no, it's not that especially in Tim added the the another quote layer of of information in here with the composited money falling down too. So just yeah. getting it right in the shot and 
you know, flagging off things that are that are interrupting what you want. You know, it's, it's a lot that goes into one of these yep. shots, not to mention the logistics of shooting in a casino and shutting it down, you know, or going after hours or whatever to get the shot. So, yep, yep. And then balancing, you know, the environmental light with the, the, the subject lighting, right? The lighting for your subject could have been terrible right there. You don't know. So, um, yeah, Tim, you did a great job. You made it look very natural. You know, it feels like he was just walking down there, you know, uh, enjoying, enjoying his day, enjoying his brand new, freshly filled beverage, by the way. Right. Right. Which, which, which is oversized to the hilt. So here's the thing, like what's the shot looks cool. Interesting. I'm sure it'll play well in Sacramento magazine. What's yep. going on here though? Like <laughs> What happened? What's happening well, in this in this shot to this guy that money is exploding all around him? He's got a drink and a cigar inside. Like what's what's going on? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I you know, I think he's just leaning into the, he's a winner, right? Like he's a winner and he's enjoying his day at the casino. Or he just has money to rain. burn either way. I make it rain, people. <laughs> yeah. I I do, I do want to point out the the backlight on the cigar smoke. Whether that's real cigar smoke, if you had to clone that in later, but right above his left hand, the fact that the the cigar smoke is is lit, yeah, that's a that's a wonderful attention to detail. So mm -hmm. good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. You have any criticisms of this shot? Like anything you would change? Um, I probably would have moved him into the frame a little bit more. And, you know, instead of having that light that's connecting to the back of his head, um, I would have tried to move him into a space where he didn't have the light like touching his head. I feel like mm -hmm. he's a little, little far to camera left and there's plenty of, of space for him to move to camera right and still keep the casino. Right. So yeah. Yeah. really, that's it. I, I, I feel compositionally it's a little he's a little too far to camera left. So. But that may have been intentional. Um, That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's for the magazine, right? So that may have 100% been client driven. Like we need space to the right yep. for whatever. But, yeah, we want to see the path. We want to see, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, absolutely. So that's hard to say. Yeah, that's hard yeah. to say. My only criticism of this is the money itself. I, I, I know what he's doing and I think it's fine. It'll play, it'll play well in print. Um, but the transparency feels unrealistic. You know, I'd want it. And I know, he, Tim, you probably lowered the op opacity on the dollar bills so that they were not competing with the subject and, you know, were were less uh, obvious. But I th you know, that lowering the opacity of them, I think you probably should have dimmed the brightness of them. I don't know. I don't know. Just seeing through the dollar, seeing through the bills or the hundred dollar bills makes it feel like I know that they were composited in there versus if they were opaque, but dimmer, darker. Um, that would have that would have been a little bit more, and that would have that would have told me that these dollar bills are maybe on a plane slightly behind him, like these dollars and the, these bills on the ground behind him, like these up here. If they were opaque and maybe the same value lighting wise as the ones on the ground there, versus being bright and transparent, that would have sold it a little bit more. But that's that's nitpickery there. Yeah, I I am I'm not opposed to the transparency. Um, I feel like it's a sort of a fantastical, you know, type of shot. And, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I actually think that aesthetically it works. It probably, it solves a lot of problems for mm -hmm. him. Um, I, I think that if, it, if they were solid, they might be too distracting. So mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't bother me. I think I'm okay with that. Well, Chad I agrees with it, obviously. Yeah. Phil Phil says interesting to see through the money, very cool. And James Glennie says I get a sense of motion from the slightly transparent money. So, hey, yeah. There's a couple bills that there are a couple bills that feel oddly sized like the lower left corner, there's two bills. Um mm. like the mm. one immediately off his knee. Yeah, that that seems a little big. I don't yeah. know. And the one above it seems a little small and you know it just especially when they're right next to each other so you're like what's going on there yeah, yeah. but we're nitpicking right now at this <laughs> point it's kind of like you know yeah i dig it tim next time you need to put a put a you know a, a 
old person back here with an oxygen tank. <laughs> <laughs> Call you. Yeah. Yeah. Put me back here with an oxygen tank and, you know, just kind of. And a beverage because they there. have beverages. So, yeah. yeah. If you want, <laughs> the if never, you want never ending guys. watered down <laughs> Long Island <laughs> iced tea. Two old guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I am not the gambler. I am not a gambler. No. I wish I was sometimes. I can't do it either. All right, Tim Engel, thank you very much, sir. And after Tim is, wait for it, wait for it, Thomas. Thomas. 1939-1944 truck and the Milky Way, California State Historical Park, Bodie Ghost Town. Yes. You've been here, right? Yeah, I know right where that's at. Nice. I've touched those headlights. Really? Yeah, it's a cool place. Yeah, it's neat. It's neat to be there at night. I, I've never done it at night. I've been there when they're they're closing and it's starting to get dark, and I'm like, oh. They only do certain nights, uh, like a couple times a year. We go in there at night, and it has to, I think it has to be with a workshop or something. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. So uh, I, I love the shot. I I really do. I really think the shot is is really wonderful. Um, I would play down the artificial light that's falling on the grass a little bit and right here watch or the... back here both yeah i just feel like environmentally i think it's a little too bright i would bring it down a little bit and then the reflection on the back window of the truck um i would bring i would bring that down you know? oh yeah uh, that one right there yeah yeah yeah, I I like the fact that the the truck is the hero, even that it's got the sign on it, which is depressing. Um, but it 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 complements the landscape and the Milky Way and everything. So I think it's I think it works really well. I just you know the the foreground feels too artificially lit, mm-hmm. so I would probably bring that down just a little bit. Yeah, overall exposure wise, do you think this is spot on for? Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really solid. Yeah, that's really solid. Definitely and a photo I, builds adventure, right? To get that get the arm of the Milky Way right above the truck. Yeah, and that was a that was the thing I was going to say is 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 he's shooting the correct direction to get an actual Milky Way shot there. So um, it looks like it was all shot in at least a single exposure, if not maybe two, and it was composited. I'm I'm wondering how he did that. So yeah, me too. That's nice. Very nice, though. Yeah. I saw a shot like this. Uh, who did it? Uh, Russell Brown, uh, one of the evangelists at Adobe, did a, did a tutorial on long exposures. And I think it was, it, was mo- it was mainly about painting with light. I don't know if it was at Bodhi, but he did a shot of a truck like this with, I think there were like mountains, it, not mountains, but um, like, like those Arizona rock formations in the background. Mm-hmm. But he lit the whole thing from a distance with the flashlight, doing painting with light. You, he basically was ex- he was doing a tutorial on how to blend multiple exposures realistically. So he did one exposure lighting the thing, another exposure just shining light on the headlights to make them look like they were illuminated, and then another uh, exposure. I think he may have popped a flash, or maybe it was some sort of lighting element inside of the car, so that it was like this mm-hmm. orange glow inside of it and a little backlighting and so you know in multiple shots and these brought them all together and masked them together and made this fantastic looking shot that wouldn't have oh, been yeah. possible any other way it's really cool yeah um i'm trying to see if i get the name right uh painting with light i'll, I'll put another thing in there there's a guy i think his name is eric curry um mm. oh my gosh he does some amazing Painting with lights up. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. This is a cool shot though. I love it. I just want I want to see more of that truck since I see it in here. I feel like this the shadow piece of it. I don't know. I'm on the fence. Like, do I want to look at the truck or do I want to look at the Milky Way? And can I have them both together? Right. 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 I don't know. I feel like I want to see more of the Milky Way. <laughs> Or is the truck the hero? And I want to see more of this dilapidated truck. And the Milky Way is just a a supporting character for this thing. I don't know. Yeah, that's. I think you know that's where creative license kind of comes in, right? Like yeah, you just have yeah. to kind of decide um, where you want to go with it. I I I, I like the balance in this image. 
um, mm-hmm. between the truck and the sky, the foreground accepted. You know, I, I like that balance. I think it's, I think it's nicely done. It feels very natural. Yeah. Yep. Really cool. So much good stuff to look at. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. All right, Paolo. Paolo, so this goes under the street photography hat taken in Siena in a narrow alley that is a choke point for people entering, exiting the famous Piazza del Campo. In the late afternoon, the sun is just in the right position for shining through the alley, casting stark shadows and delighting the photographer who wants to play with the idea of negative space. The title is Dila, which translates to that way. Nice caption. Oh, nice. Look at that. And no faces. Look at that. Well, no, no full on straight on faces. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, well, I struggle with an image that is just on pure black, mm-hmm. you know, um, because it just feels like they're in a void and without somebody explaining the image, it's hard to grasp what's happening. You know, um, and the face in the top left hand corner, I don't think really adds to the image. So, you know, I'm, yeah, so I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, if we were more monochromatic for one, I think black and white would really help this a lot. And if there was any background detail um, that, you know, could be brought into it to kind of give us a sense of place. Mm hmm because we don't we don't know right they we don't we don't know what's happening we have no idea and maybe that's maybe that's fine maybe that's the intention of the photographer and i'm good with that um Mm -hmm. then then i would definitely lean more into the black and white even more and go more abstract and take more information away and the guy in the top left i don't yeah get rid of him yeah yeah Yeah. i agree get rid of him And, and his coat down here i think that's his coat is that yeah yeah there's there's something going on there yeah. Yeah, interesting. I agree with you on the black and white thing. Yeah, this one, I feel like you remember we used to say, and we always still say, it's still kind of a thing that if color color is not in support of the whole idea of the shot, consider removing it or, or reducing its right, impact. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if this were black and white, then we wouldn't care that he has a blue T-shirt on and I have one similar to that or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. It would just, it would just be a, it would just, you know, keep our attention on our heroes, which is these three people. We nuke him, and keep our attention yep. on these three people. Yep. yep I gotta exactly. stop. I gotta stop using the word nuke because that is, uh, you know, considering the times we're living in, that's probably <laughs> probably an off limits word for right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Remove him. Yeah, we could remove him from the photo. Yeah. And I just put um, two links in the chat, uh, one for Eric Curry, Curry with a Y, some of the most amazing light painting I've ever seen. If you mm. light painting, like off the chart light painting. And then Andy Goldsworthy was the other one, the abstract artist. I put a link in there. So awesome. Hey, yeah. the last thing on this one, he's got, I mean, this is black, right? And he's got a black border yep. on here for one. Do we need a black border on a black shot? And for two, it's interesting. He used the orange, uh, label tet or font on the edge there which kind of replicates what you see on on some old film yeah. stocks so what, do you, what do you think about that I, I think it's super cool uh it's a very clever um wh- what i what i would probably do is i would lighten the border with a slight orange tinge just like you might see in film you don't have to put the film holes or anything like that in it right the sprocket holes um but but create some separation from the image and what is your black border, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. because you're using that sort of um, color film, orange print look, lean into that and and maybe make that border like that really dark, burnt umber, you know, just barely noticeable, but something like that. I would love to see that. That's such a neat idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just so it doesn't get lost in that abyss. I agree with you on the abyss. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, we don't know what's happening there. Very cool. Thank you, Paolo. Yes. Excellent. All right. James Glennie's up next. He says, ridiculously soft, tiny ball of floof. Yes. 
Look at that little person. Look at that little person wow. with that little nose. A little nose. <laughs> yeah, that's really beautiful. That's really well done. Um, one, I, I I do love the treatment since we were just talking about borders and things. I think that the treatment on this is really really nice. Nice nice finish with a key line and everything. And, uh, you know, that soft element that's going on, like this subject is perfect for that, that soft window light, um, shallow depth of field, but all the important parts of the cat's face are in focus and, you know, tack, I think that, um, perfect, you know, perfectly done. So, yeah, yeah, it's very soft, soft subject, you know, shallow depth of field, throwing the background soft and it's almost, it almost feels high key, but low key at the same time or high key and medium key. So the face. <laughs> <laughs> right nice. if that's such a thing yeah and i i don't know how many people have watched uh the show sandman um but the very did you see the last special episode with the cats i can't spoil it no i don't think i watched that there okay. was it's at the end of the last episode you have to watch it there's like a special short um <laughs> I can't, dude. It's so good. I can't look at a cat. Don't tell me it. I'm gonna it. watch it. I'll watch it after this. <laughs> I'll watch it after this. You and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that is that is cats for sure. That is absolutely cats right there. Yeah. Really? Have you played that so, game? You know, there's a game out no. where you get to play a cat, right? Have no, you played it? But, uh -uh. You're afraid of it, aren't you? You're afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, I already have too many games. Yeah, I know. I have a feeling. But yeah, great, I love this. Great stuff. image. This cool. Yeah, James, beautiful, beautiful image. Um, yeah, I love it. This well wants done. to be Very printed. Well this wants to be printed. Print it, frame it, hang it on the wall. Yeah. All right. And up next is Stephen Scharf. Uh, he says, "Never cross the black lotus." All right, Stephen. I'm not going to read all this, but let's look at our shot. Look at that. Wait, did he leave any? clues as to how he shot this in here uh okay we're talking about the racing okay cool yeah, yeah. of course very well technically ex executed here i love this shot yeah. I mean, but look what he did here you see what's going on right yeah yeah i know it's it's very neat um it's selective I love color tires and yeah it's very very classic um you know, it's a it's a really it's a really cool shot. It's a really fun shot. I think that uh, you know shots like this are always always great to have. The 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 challenge for images like this, if you're really going to get picky and you're going to start thinking about like competitions and things like that, like there's clearly environmental elements in here that are distracting that you can't do a lot with, right? Like the trucks and all those kind of things. So. Right. Um, in situations like this, you know, I always just like go in as close as I can to kind of get rid of the world. But I do love the the layering of tone and the layering of color that's that's in this, you know, the black, the red, the black, the red. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool shot. <clears throat> I like the lens choice, too. He's got a, a wide lens and he's up close on that tire. I'm guessing, Stephen, you're probably what, like five feet or less from that tire? not closer yeah like it's a that. nice wide angle yeah it's mm -hmm. it's really nice look yeah. how fat those look at those back tires look at those look at those fenders that's crazy i want that yeah car. those are fun yeah this is this is back when speed killed a lot you know they were experimenting with everything yeah beautiful beautiful all nice right yep yeah. yeah border wise you're good with that but again we we've talked about this too not to not to go back to this, but the the non-symmetrical border treatment, right? And this non-symmetrical border treatment would would this be would this be good for competition or yeah. what? Like if you were going to submit this, yeah, it would be it would be good. I mean, if you if you want to make it a little stronger, I would I would uh, increase the chin on the bottom and bump it up so the left and right and top are the same size and leave the bottom slightly heavy it'll give it a, a sense of a more more of a base yeah. um but but it it really is up to personal preference at at this level yeah mm -hmm. i like it very cool yeah super nice Stephen sharp never disappoints uh he said uh yes i burned down that triangle of light on the chassis 
and the front wheel of the Lotus with the luminosity mask. Okay, there's detail and texture there, and it lends a sense of dynam dynamism, dynamism to the car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Stephen, you got to start a little gallery in in your place. Multiple galleries. Like uh, real estate shots and car shots and landscape shots, you know, different different phases of the gallery. Next up is Nora Zanotnis. She says, at the auto wreckers. Nice. Very simple. This is, I saw this. Yeah. I instantly thought of you. This looks very Doctor Who for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a, a Star Trek badge. <laughs> like a car yeah, badge. Yeah, or a Star Trek badge, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yay, or, yay, you get one of my references. Yes. Oh, dude, I'm a my old family's a tri or trickies. Um, <laughs> but I was gonna say, uh, do you get this reference? Close the pod bay doors, Hal. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes. Open the pod bay doors. No, I have to close the pod bay doors. <laughs> <laughs> um this is this is really wonderful, Nora, uh, and really sort of plays to your strength, which is you know this artistic minimalism uh, that that you're so adept at. I, I think it's just so wonderful, and I just I don't know if you change the color of the car or if it was just very serendipitous that it you know we had this wonderful color harmony between you know the red ale light, the sort of mauve or pink you know car. And then you got that that corroded, you know, chrome around there. I, it's just, it's perfect. It's just, it's a perfect image. Yeah, and, you know, for anybody who's a car buff at any level, I think they're really going to appreciate this. Um, and th th this is this is a really good example of how minimalism and how less is more can tell such a wonderful story, right? I can picture everything else around this car, but I don't need to see it in the frame to appreciate it. Yeah, so. yeah, I want, but I do want to see that junkyard where this was found. Though. I want the <laughs> <laughs> like, like this is this is Christine mid mid uh, repair. <laughs> but you know the the crazy thing is, is like this could be on a piece of a fender that's rotted out, that's laying in the side, you know, under like it could it could be anything anywhere, um, and also you know, kudos to finding it. Mm -hmm. and photographing it right because mm -hmm. to make a great image you you not only have to show up but you have to put in effort yeah. and uh you know as we've seen in in all of these images like you know you put in the effort so yeah you gotta you gotta show up you gotta find it and then you gotta see it right like yeah there, <laughs> there's a lot mm -hmm. yeah really good really good Nora has that sauce. She's got that special sauce going on. She does. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. When I go take my walks, I try to. I try to channel my Nora. Like, what can I, what can <laughs> I photograph on my walk? You know. All right, what's going on with Doctor Pronsky here? What is this? I have no idea what's happening. Huh. You Are you the page? that? Maybe? Let me reload the page. Let's see if that. Is that a it. circle thing? It I've might be. I've never seen that either. Let's take a look. Uh, show more comments. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's something. No, it must Maybe not have gone. Must not. Loaded. It didn't get uploaded. It might be a like a unrecognized format or something. He was he was uploading the images and and he was paying attention to the grandbaby and not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not his yeah, exactly. That's called grandpa <laughs> being being grandchild drunk. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, what do you think? Do you have a favorite out of all uh, those? You got to pick a favorite and you got to pick a topic for, for the next critique. What do, you, what do you mean? Yes, it's the responsibility. I can't do it. Mm. That'd be insider trading if I did it. It would be insider trading. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, the next topic is going to be hats. Oh, yeah. interesting. Oh, you yeah. just look at your screen. You're literally so that's how Troy picks these. He literally looks at the screen. He's like, oh, the next one will be books. No, guitar. No, stainless steel. The wood. <laughs> now look, I got a I got a note right here. It says hats. You like, just wrote that. I saw you. I didn't. <laughs> okay, I did. <laughs> I'm on to you, man. I'm on to you. Uh, I know your tricks. That's how I make up all the topics. 
Hats. I um, like hats. We'll do hats. Yes. But favorite. favorite. What is uh, your favorite? I really love Nora's. You, Nora, 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 you are now forbidden. I, <laughs> but I didn't say that was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Let me bring these back up. Like, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you break the tie. Okay. Cause for okay. me, it's between, it's between Nora's and yeah. Kai's. Yeah. I like Nora's. I like Kai's the best. And I also like Phil's. I'm very much I... in a, in a minimalist mood. So, uh, Nora's and Kai's really, really play to those strong suits. Okay, so Nora's, oh, Nora's was the car, right? Yeah. The, yeah. The last one, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So between this one or Kai's and this one. Yeah. Kai's mm-hmm. is a, a little bit more favorite. If that's a thing. A little more favorite her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I like favorite my favorite children. I do like them both, but I I, I like Kai's um, just a l- little bit more because of the graphical nature of it. Almost like the f- almost looks like a flag of, of some foreign nation. Yeah, thing, right. I think I like Nora's their... got some serious competition now that Kai's come back to the field. Uh oh, Godzilla <laughs> versus Rodan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is a great shot too. Look at that. Nora I says can... Kai's for the win. Doctor Who. Nora, you're just tired of all the trophies. Ah, she's humble. She's a humble <laughs> artist. Yeah, I do. yeah, these are these are all good. But good this job. one, I like this one is exceptional too. Okay. Look at that. We'll go with Kai. Yeah. Because there's plenty of room for text in there too, Fred, in case you needed it for <laughs> some. <laughs> yeah, you can put a big a big font of something and have it slightly yeah. obscured by the hill. Comic stands. Know? A big like Join Comic Twip Sans, right dude. there. What's the Comic matter Sans? with you? Comic Sans. Oh my god! <laughs> Don't you know it's Futura? Futura Extra Bold or uh, what's the other one? Railway. Railway is another font. Uh, that's good. You have to use them all because that's that's the epitome of good design is to use all the fonts. Yes, James Mulaney <laughs> says wingding. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we should do that. Like, have people sign, sound off on what your favorite font. Futura Extra Bold was my favorite font forever. And then I saw on Netflix, I think it was the Helvetica documentary. There's a whole yes. documentary on Helvetica, and yes. I fell in love with Helvetica all over again. So we now need it's serifs. Like, we all need serifs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Except Hel- on the Helvetica has no serifs. It's it's a sans serif font. There are no serifs. That's the whole point of Helvetica. <laughs> you keep your serif. You go to Times New Roman and just stay over there. All the cool kids will stay with Helvetica. Done. Yeah, Steven says Garamond. See, that's another sans serif font. I believe that's sans serif. <laughs> yes. No serifs. No serifs. One works for print and one works for the computer. Yeah. Well, one works for titling and graphical design and one is easier to read. Like serifs. Serifs are tend to be easier to read. If you're gonna read like paragraphs or a book, yeah. you probably want yeah. some serifs on there. But sans serifs for everything else. Like all your street signs, everything, they're all Helvetica. I watched Serif. the same documentary. <laughs> I'm just saying. Helvetica for the win. Not uh, only, <laughs> See, we go off on these my, tangents. No, not only my daughter is like a, a font fanatic so i get this all the time <laughs> yes we've had kira and i have had this conversation about fonts yeah, yeah we've yeah. had this conversation she understands the magic of fonts and how important she they does. are yes she, she, gets it. Yep. she gets it all right folks uh so our next critique is uh two weeks from today it is going to be on uh, we are on october 3rd as we're recording this so the next critique like this will be on the 17th Our group critique will be a week from today on the 10th. That won't be in this room. That'll be in our regular old Zoom room because that accommodates all the folks and everybody can share and do all the things. But you'll get an event for that, too. And I'll I'll, I think what I'm going to do is pre-schedule these out again now that we're doing these recorded critiques um, internal to the community. That means I can schedule them and just kind of have them there and ready to go. So we'll do that. And that's it. Congratulations, Kai, on being this week's favorite. Any final thoughts you want to throw out there, Troy, before we wrap this one? Uh, you know, go create something cool. Just mm-hmm. Get out there. 
Yeah. Make something. Absolutely. Make something of yourself. I made a I made a I made an S or a Z or a snake or a worm out of a cable tie. Oh my god. Just so you know, during the whole critique, I take this and I bend it in little circles and then I straighten it out and make it perfect again. So that's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I still, yeah. Yeah. This one was tough. This critique was tough. There's a lot of good shots. I'm yeah. still thinking about Phil's, Phil's shot with his micro contrast and, you know, well, ugh. everybody's getting better. Right. When we, when you and I went back and looked over all the old images, I really was like, Oh my gosh. Like you can, you can clearly see images quality scaling through time. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. At some point, everybody has to win. No, absolutely. Like, we're, before, one competition we're like we can't pick. Before we sign off, I got just got to do this honorable mention then cuz this one is just outstanding. I love this shot. Look at that. Look at that. It's almost biblical. Look at that. <laughs> so nice. So nice. Phil, you should be proud of yourself. And what are you doing? What are you doing sitting in the house watching us? You should be out there uh capturing more raw material for your next shot. Look at that. Right. Do that. All right, Troy Miller. Thank you, sir. And I will All see right, you guys. Next time. And thanks, everybody. Right, yeah, everybody. We'll see you, we'll see you uh, for the next critique on Monday and before then, this coming Friday for our member mixer. So be sure to dive, yes. sign up, and come in there. All right. Got it. See, see you latest. Bye, everybody.